In this lesson, we'll continue our view of reading test eight, section one. We're now on the fourth passage out of five, and this is the dual passage. So let's read the reference information. These passages are adapted from the Lincoln-Douglas debates. Passage one is a statement from Stephen Douglas. Passage two is a statement by Abraham Lincoln. Douglas and Lincoln are engaged in a series of debates while competing for a U.S. Senate seat in 1858. So a couple of points about the dual passage. On every release test, it has been the founding document passage. And so that's typically an older passage, maybe 100 or 200 years old. It's always persuasive. And it's some argument for and against social injustice. And the reason I said for and against is because every, every two-part passage has had this topic. And we know it's persuasive. And what I recommend for these dual passages is just read passage one and then only answer questions from one. And once you you're reducing now a two-part passage into a single passage, then you'll return to the passage, you answer the questions, you have a much better idea. You could almost predict before reading two then for the first time how it's gonna differ because they're, it's always the same subject but a different perspective, not necessarily opposite but different. Then you read two, answer questions that deal with two, and at the very end, then you can compare and contrast. It's just a much better method, I think, instead of reading everything at once. And so I assume you've read this. Again, this passage one, is part of the debate, and this is Stephen Douglas. And so I'll just read the very beginning. Mr. Lincoln, remember he's debating Lincoln, likens that bond of federal constitution joining free and slave states together to a house divided against itself and says it cannot, it is contrary to the law of God and cannot stand. So he's stating Lincoln's argument here. He's criticizing Lincoln. And so he's saying that Lincoln is claiming that joining the free and slave states is a house divided. But then he goes on to say, why is it a house divided? And he asks a series of rhetorical questions around line 25. I come back to the question, why cannot this union divided into free and slave states as our fathers made it, why can't it exist forever? It can thus exist if each state will care the principles upon which our institutions were founded, to wit, the right of each state to do as it pleases without meddling with its neighbor. So he's claiming, you know, this has existed in the past, why can't it just keep going on and our, our, the union has prospered with this, this state? And so we're only answering questions from passage one. So question 32, in the first paragraph of passage one, the main purpose of Douglas' discussion of the growth of the territory and population of the U.S. is to what? So this is a specific question because they're giving us reference where to find it. And that's the first paragraph that where I just read. He is being critical of Lincoln and claiming that Lincoln is saying joining free and slave states together is a house divided. But remember, Douglas is saying, why can't it continue like this to be divided between free and slave states? And so let's look at the answers. We need something specifically about the free and s slave states. A, provide context for Douglas' defense for continued expansion. This isn't specific enough. Suggest that the division into free and slave states does not endanger the union. This is exactly the argument here. So that answer is B. And then 33 and 34, always scan down. This is a two-part question, okay? And so we want to find in passage one what it suggests about the U.S. government's provision for the institution of slavery as framed by the Constitution. And so we're looking for some evidence. We know it's between 10 and or 45, but there's a little bit of a gap there, so let's see. And we'll start around 10 first and see if there's any evidence about the Constitution. So 10, during that period, we have increased from 4 million to 30 million. We've extended the territory. So all of this is really about the expansion. There's nothing about the Constitution. The Constitution is mentioned here, but this is, he's referencing Lincoln. So that's not going to be his argument. I don't think this is even a one of the uh, line references. Remember, there was a gap between it was 10 and I think 15, and then it went to 25, which is the next paragraph. So in 25, I come back to the question, why cannot this union exist forever? It can thus exist if each state will carry out the principles upon which our institutions were founded, the right of each state to do as it pleases. And this is really referencing the free and slave states as our fathers made it, right? The Constitution. It can thus exist if they'll carry out the principles to which the institutions, the institutions are based on the Constitution. So a little bit of reference, but that definitely is the evidence here. 
And so let's look at the first question. Remember, we want the government's provisions for the institution of slavery. And they use that language, the institution, even though they didn't mention the Constitution, it was mentioned earlier. And so the evidence is in B. What's the answer now for 33? They included no means for reconciling the differences between free states and slave states. Definitely not, right? Because he is arguing that the differences have existed and it's completely compatible and the union has prospered. They anticipated the union's expansion into the western territories. Again, this is not accurate. It's a little too specific. They provided the institution of slavery a good basic structure that doesn't need to be changed. This is his whole argument. Why can't it go on? and continue forever. And so now you see the next question, 35, is already dealing in passage two. So I'm just gonna stop the video here again. I think it's a good technique if you just answer one passage at a time, and then in the next video, we're just going to answer passage two.